Hello everyone, it's Evan here from The Trade Risk and this is your Stock Market Weekly Update for Friday, December 15th. Let's kick things off here with a very quick trip down memory lane. This is the headlines, these are the titles of our last six episodes of Stock Market Weekly on YouTube. All the way down here, back in November the 3rd, we ran a headline, the best week for stocks in 2023. November 10th, the chase is on 5% money markets. Is it still worth it? November 17th, more bull market believers each and every week. November 24th, four-year lows for the VIX. December 1st, one of the best months for stocks in a decade. December 8th, more small cap rotation, plus some metal rejection. So if you read that as sort of a textbook chapters or just headlines, I think you get a good sense that things started to really, I mean, November 3rd, clearly the best week for stocks in 2023, uh, in hindsight now being the spark that really sort of fueled this move. And I wanted to start here because when we look at the takeaways from this week, the Fed at the front here, right, really is the story or capturing the headlines and zeitgeist of investors this week. Fed signals its intention to halt hikes. Fed sees 75 basis point reduction next year. So this was some of sort of the takeaways from the FOMC meeting uh, this week. And if someone is relying solely on news, you can clearly see how late you can be. Um, and this really speaks to tracking technicals, following the market price action because it sniffs things out early. It is usually pricing an anticipation of the next upcoming sort of headlines. All of that sorts sort of fits together in most cases. And I think this is just a picture perfect example of the market really sort of preempting this effective headline this week here. So I think for folks that are maybe picking up the headline this week and thinking, oh, the coast is clear now the Fed is, you know, saying uh, it's on the other side. Well, the reality is since November 3rd, the market has basically been pricing this in. Now, I know there's other things going on. It's not that simple. So uh, as always with markets, it's never just one thing or that straightforward. But I think you understand kind of the, the reason why this is uh, kind of important. And this is why we do these videos. We try and just keep a pulse of where markets are trending and moving and rotating uh, because they do tend to lead uh, the news and sort of, you know, action that is coming. So really, uh, the Fed saying all of this this week, I think is nice. It's great. But now, honestly, it's almost like, OK, we're kind of late. And where's the next move now? We've had a good run. The market seemingly priced a lot of this in. Where are we going next? Now, that doesn't mean I'm bearish all of a sudden. I think small caps uh, testing a major level right here is something that's very important. We're going to talk about today. We have lower lows, lower highs for the U.S. dollar. Qs are up at their upper weekly Bollinger Band. And hey, 30-year mortgage rates back down to the mid sixes. So lots to like, lots to continue to like. Let's get into the charts here right now. All right, here we go. TC2000, that's the charting platform we're using here to tour markets this evening. By the way, they are running a affiliate sort of discount. If you use the promo code or the link in the description of this video, you can get, I think, $25 off, I believe, last time I checked. Uh, so check out uh, that link in the description. Basically pays for your first month of TC2000. If you're interested in the software, we have a lot of cool things built for it. And uh, you can check that out at thetraderisk.com. Let's get into the numbers here. One week returns, green, green, green across the board. Russell 2000, 5.47%. It's up 10% now in the past month. And if we look at the NASDAQ up 3%. 0.3%, not too shabby, followed by uh, the Dow and the S&P. Volatility continues to basically flatline here. The VIX is 12 spot 3.1 going into the weekend, and NASDAQ fall is under 16. You can see we had just really a 
big ramp here on uh, Wednesday, Thursday for the Russell 2000 and, and basically the market just as a whole. And it's just another stellar week for the bulls. If we take a look at the sector performance here at the top of the list this week, we've got real estate, we've got materials, we've got industrials leading the charge up almost four to five and a half percent. On the downside, we had communication services, utilities and healthcare all still green about one percent, but the underperformers, every single sector closing in the green this week. And if we look at our trends, basically, again, everything looks pretty wonderful and rosy right now minus energy if you look at our smart trend filters here you can see energy is the only thing kind of printing yellow and red dots everything else is up to the right pointing green dots and and for the most part has been for the past multiple weeks this has been quite the stretch to the upside of course as we talked about at the headlines at the start of this video this is not a new rally at this point let's take a look at market breath so if we look down here first at number of 52 week highs and lows, again, we still see this ratio working in the bull's favor here. We're getting more expansion of stocks hitting 52 week highs. That's a good thing. Stocks hitting 52 week lows continues to dry up. That is a good thing. And if we continue to see small cap stocks move, it should reinforce these numbers even more. If we take a look at breath here in terms of moving averages, you can see now the percentage of stocks in the New York Stock Exchange above a 200 SMA is up at 67%. It was um, recently, and when I say recently, a month ago, a um, little over a month ago, was down here around 18% in the bottom percentile of historic ranges. And it is slingshot all the way back up to 67%, not quite into the very stretched territory, but pretty darn close. The 50 SMA percentage of stocks over 50 SMA is in this stretched territory up at 76% right now. Let's take a look at IBD's top 10 stocks. So IBD is a sponsor of the show. Thank you, Investors Business Daily, for making this show possible. You can support IBD, support us with a link in the description of this video. Get access to their digital subscription. You can see here's their top 10 stocks on their IBD 50. Uh, kind of mixed this week. It, nothing really changed. I think this list has been holding pretty steady uh, on, on terms of its top 10 rank. Uh, you can see NVIDIA back at the top here, 2.91% uh, up. Uh, DraftKings was down this week. First Citizens was down a little bit as well. But generally speaking, some big performers in here uh, and for good reason being on that list. Let's take a look at uh, commodities here. You saw a rebound in metals, particularly silver was up 3.5%. It got really hammered uh, the last couple of weeks. And and so nice rebound this week. You can see oil was was kind of trying to, you know, catch its footing as well, up 1%, copper up, gold was up. Really, uh, dollar index was hit pretty hard and natural gas uh, can't quite... Uh, stick a landing here. It's it's struggling and uh, continues to sell off. If we take a look at Treasury yields, I mean, this is the story. Of course, we talked about the Fed at the at the beginning, kind of jawboning on uh, the fact that it's it's done with this cycle of of hiking interest rates. It sees you know seventy five base points of cuts in the next year. To I think two hundred and fifty basis points in the next two years. So um, you know interest rates, bond market, getting it right. Uh, it was early. It was ahead of it, broke down in um, late October, early November. And this continues to sort of be in free fall now. Good uh, seemingly trend reversal in place. And of course, the market loves it. Let's go to our price action charts. Here's the S&P 500. Again, Man, this weekly chart just looks so strong and so impressive. I mean, this is a V-shape rally at its finest here. Just totally left uh, in the dust here. You had to act quick. You had to either chase, get off the shorts, build exposure. You had to move into this market pretty aggressively because this left folks behind in very, uh, you know, sort of record beating pace. And so we talked about this consolidation. In fact, last week, if you rewind the tape on uh, Friday, we liked the fact that this was closing up here at 4601. It looked like it was ready to start to lift up. We talked about this 
consolidation, right? All the clues here, of course, in hindsight, but we were talking about, you know, the fact that this was digesting just through time, that bears and sellers, they couldn't break this down. We couldn't get some type of price correction. At best, we got a time correction moving sideways right underneath resistance, which is just generally speaking, one of the most bullish types of consolidations. We talked about, um, in fact, this target right here, 4730 last week as our next objective for the market to test in the S&P 500. And here we are five days later testing that target now. And you see the market, you know, kind of going sideways here. It ran into it on Thursday and um, had a nice little kind of doji and then inside day on Friday. So, um, Look, I mean, the picture really hasn't changed here. Uh, this market rally is not new at this point. It's been in an uptrend now for a month and a half. We've covered a lot of ground. We're starting to get more believers. Maybe we're starting to get some complacency and some froth, but technically uh, this picture still looks strong we're at resistance here so a little bit of digestion again to start the week i think would be a good thing um bulls continue to you know uh, exert strength in small caps and market breadth we're not quite back up at the all-time highs for the s p 500 but at this pace i don't see why we can't get back up there in the coming weeks again no crystal ball here we're going to take things one day as a time uh, at a time for now i'd like to see the market digest clear through this resistance and overhead supply and then work its way back up to 4800 i think on the downside i mean you're sort of protected you kind of have a a new level of uh stop losses or risk off down around 4600 which was effectively last week's highs if we can stay above 4600 then this market continues to grind higher and act well meanwhile the nasdaq 100 is oh so close to making all-time highs very close in fact it made new weekly closing all-time highs so on a weekly basis the nasdaq 100 i should really use although i don't really think there's many dividends ndx 16 623.45 was the close and if we go back here yeah, so we got a new all-time closing high, closing print, but not quite a, yeah, not quite an all-time high. So November 26, 2021, uh, just over two years ago, was the all-time high for the for the NASDAQ 100. But this weekly chart, I mean, this looks pretty impressive. This looks really strong here again as we mentioned at the top of the show weekly bollinger bands here you're getting stretched you're getting frothy the chase is on i mean this is no new trade at this point so buyer beware up at these prices but momentum is continuing to accelerate here to the upside uh just because it's hitting bollinger bands doesn't mean it's a reason to sell or short um but um you know this is just coming into these prior all-time highs and i'd expect uh, a test of that or perhaps a breach of that early next week the big story though even bigger than i mean the the, the nasdaq hitting or getting close to its all-time highs is, is pretty big story but um in terms of developing stories, I think the Russell 2000 deserves even more attention. I mean, we've been talking about it as, as you know, we saw the headlines here as, uh, you know, rotation continues. I do think this is, you know, if, if we are going to continue, if this is a new bull market that has some serious legs behind it, the Russell 2000 has got to be the place to start to break out. Uh, I guess it doesn't have to be, but I would imagine that this consolidation, this potentially accumulation that has been going on here for uh you know a year and a half if this can break out here and start to lift up i mean we've got some serious fuel in the tank here for the russell 2000 breakout consolidation again it's up pretty much in a straight line five six weeks uh it's up 20 percent since early november so this is already gone for a good trip here i wouldn't hate it if it consolidated sideways but markets don't like to make things easy and if the bus just leaves the station here and continues to break out then it's going to be some true chasing so keep an eye on this i think this is the most uh, kind of interesting actionable long-term chart now for uh, the u.s indices and we'll see if the small caps can um you know kind of take the flag here take the leadership perhaps into 2024 so that's the big charts there that i wanted to talk about 
In terms of some other markets, I'm going to keep things kind of short this week. Again, gold, uh, we talked about those rejections last week. It was nice that we didn't quite get more seller follow through this week. The you know buyers tried to kind of step back in here for GLD. So there's some um, saving going on here for the metals. Same thing for silver, big you know kind of sell candle rejection last week, 9.5%. We came back this week. But it was the dollar. I mean, the dollar index here rolling over, one of the heaviest volumes volume for the UUP anyway, uh, ETF here that tracks the US dollar index, you can see big range here engulfing bar, uh, lower lows, lower highs here. So the dollar certainly in, um, you know, kind of struggling um, as of well, as of the last month, basically, as this whole kind of equities trade flipped, and uh, rates topped and uh, the dollar has been topping as well. So that's kind of the big story there from the macro side. Let's end it with some of the um, strongest and weakest stocks here. So it's a layout that we have built for TC2000. So over the past five days, semiconductors, biotech, those were the top two. In fact, biotech was something we talked about last week. Uh, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, but basically saying like, hey, this seems to be where uh, some good rotation can, can continue to take place here, especially if small caps continue to catch a bid. And it certainly was the case this week, up 8%. Uh, you can see some of the names here in... Um, Let's see. Well, I guess if we look at semiconductors, you can see some of the big movers this week, a bunch of double digit winners right on this five day column. You see where my mouse is. Uh, some of the strongest names there. You can see also uh, here 50 SMA, 200 SMA is rising in most of these stocks. So they're in healthy long term uptrends. If you go down to biotech here again, uh, more of a mixed picture because some of these stocks have been more beaten up, but you got plenty of five day moves in the 30 and 20 percent and high teens this week. So we had some big movement here in biotech, and this continues to be just a place where capital seems to rotate. So that is what I have for this week, a little bit short and sweet, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, I love to know what you think about this market, believing in the rally, S&P 500 at all time highs before the end of the year. What are your thoughts? You think the market's getting a bit frothy here? The Fed is kind of, you know, paved the path to a potential short-term top. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you had a great week as we wind out 2023. And of course, we'll be here each and every Friday with our long-form stock market weekly analysis video. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you back here next week.